So let's say you've already created a lens. Uh, you have some nice grain on there. You have an old timey color filter, but you want to take it to the next level. Now, the thing about those older cameras is that their frame rate was much lower than the cameras today. Snapchat runs at about 30 frames per second, but an old time camera would run a lot slower. Now, if your lens isn't running at 30 frames per second, Snapchat won't allow it. They want to prove it. So if you want to turn at a lower frame rate, you have to simulate that. And that's very uh, simple to add. Um, all we need is to add another camera to enable and disable to freeze the image and then a fairly simple script to control it all. So let's get started. I'm going to start off by creating a new render target here in the resources panel. I'm going to rename this to freeze. Then I'm also going to add a new camera up here in the objects panel. I want to call this freeze cam. And then I'm just going to drag it up to the top just to keep things ordered. And I want to place that on a new layer. Call it freeze. I want to take it off of the default layer. The render target, I want to send it to freeze. Now I'm going to select my original camera. I'm going to change the clear color option to texture, and the input to the freeze render target. So why am I doing that? Well, when you disable a camera, the image freezes. So let's turn off the grain for a minute. You can see my subject is no longer moving. If I re-enable that camera, then she starts moving. So let's grab someone that's moving a little more, just so it's more obvious. If I freeze the camera, the motion freezes. If I enable the camera, the motion resumes. Now, the problem with that is, well, not the problem with that. The reason we have to do a separate camera is if we just have the one camera and we enable and disable that, um, the motion isn't going to stop. So we need this second camera and the new render target in order to get that freezing motion. Now, I don't want to sit here and click all day to create that reduced frame rate. So let's create a script to finish off our effect. So in the resources panel, I'm going to come here and add, and I'm actually going to create a script graph. I'm going to use the new visual scripting feature in Lens Studio. Here's my script graph. I'm going to rename this to freeze frame. You can call it whatever you want. Now with that selected, come up and click graph editor. Now most of our work is going to be in this graph editor. So I'm going to just rearrange a few things to make it a little easier to see what's going on. If you click on the title and hold any of these panels, you can drag them around. I'm going to move the inspector over. I'm going to move the preview for now as well. Okay, now if you mess something up and you get lost, you can always come up to Window, Panels, Default Layout, and it'll reset the whole layout of Lens Studio. But I think this is pretty good for now, so let's get started with our effect. So in the Script Graph Editor, I will start off with an Initialize node. This will trigger when our lens is first turning on. An Update event, and this will run every frame. Now. Things are going to get a little confusing because there's a frame rate of Snapchat. And then in our lens, we're creating a reduced frame rate. This is going to run every frame update of Snapchat itself. So 30 times per second. Um, our reduced frame rate is going to be an illusion built on top of that. So let's start with our initialize event here. Um, there is a little bit of step we need to get our effect started. So our overall approach. Uh, we're going to keep track of which frame we're on. Then every certain number of frames, let's say every two frames, every three frames, we'll turn on the camera. And then the next frame, we'll disable it. We'll keep it disabled for some amount of time. Then we'll re-enable it to update the view. And if we do that over and over, we'll get that jittery look, even though Snapchat will still technically be updating every uh, 30 frames per second. So let's create a variable. So come over here to the top right, click add variable. And I'm going to call this count. And I want it to be a number. We're going to be counting how many frames have passed. And so we have our variable. 
this is going to store that number. Now we need to start it out at something. And that's where this initialize event comes into play. I'm going to right click, or you can also click this plus button up here and select add node. And the first thing I want to do is I want to set my variable value. So I'm going to search for set variable. I'll add that. And you can see it already says set count. So if you have multiple variables uh, with this node selected, you can come over here and you can choose the right one. I'm going to go ahead and start it at zero. And I'm going to plug this into here. And now when our lens runs, we'll create a variable named count. I'll give it a value of zero. Is all we need to do for this initialize event. Now let's get started with our update event. So we're going to have a little more going on. We're going to need to check which frame we're on, figure out if we should enable or disable the camera. And then after we've done that, we will increase our count variable by one to know that we've processed another frame. So we have a certain number of events we need to process. Now, these little triangle inputs and outputs, uh, these kind of stand for events. So if this happens, we'll trigger the set count. And then when this is done, we can trigger something else. Um, we'll be able to do that with the update event or if we don't want to create a very long line of events, we can create a sequence. And rather than chain everything together in one long line, we can do little pieces off of this sequence. So let's go and start. And on my sequence, I'm going to have three events happening. I'm going to decide if we should enable the camera. Then I'm going to print out the value of count just so we can see in the logger that our script is running. And then we'll increase the count. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's make a little bit of space. And I'm going to um, use my variable count, but there's also a few other inputs I need. Um, I need to know which camera to freeze, and then I need to know how often I should be freezing it. So let's create some inputs. I'm going to add a node. I need a camera input. And I'm going to name this freeze cam. And I also need a number input. And I'll call this frame delay. And then control type, I'm going to change this to a slider. And I'll say minimum value, we'll say two. Max 30. And step will be one. All right, so what is going on with all this? So this frame delay will be how many frames we want to wait in between when we enable and disable the camera. Now, if we had a value of one, we'd be updating every frame. If we select value of two, that means every other frame will enable or disable the camera. And you can go all the way up to 30, which would be about one update per second. And then the step, just make sure we can only increase this by one at a time. Uh, so we'll see this come into play in just a minute. Uh, the important thing is to have this number input to get our frame delay. All right, so we are going to want to compare um, our count of the number of frames with how often to be enabling the camera. So to do that, we need to get the variable. And once again, we can see it's default into our count variable because that's the only one. If you ever have more than one variable, you can select it up here. All right, so we want to compare our count with our delay. So I'm going to rearrange those because now I'm going to add a modulo. Now, if you search for modulo, nothing comes up. You have to search for the symbol, which is a percent sign. So if you've ever programmed before, you've probably seen the symbol. If you haven't, you probably have no idea what's going on. To you, this is means percent. So when a computer divides a number, um, if they're both integers, it'll just do an integer division. So let's say five divided by two. In real life, that'd be 2.5. If we're working with whole numbers, it would give us a value of two, and then we'd have a remainder of one. And this modulo gives you just the remainder. So 
What that means is, let's say we want to update every two frames, and we start out with our count of zero. So when the count is zero, zero modulo two is zero, one modulo two is one, two modulo two is zero, three modulo two is one, and so on and so forth. So we get this repeating pattern of just the remainders. So anytime the modulo is zero, we can trigger our camera to turn on, otherwise we'll turn it off. So let's grab an equals. You wanna make sure it's inside this math section. We just wanna see if this modulo value equals zero. So if the remainder is zero. So once again, if our frame delay is two, essentially all the even numbers will have a modulo of zero. If our frame delay is three, every multiple of three will have a modulo of zero. So the higher the frame delay, the slower our frame rate. So if it equals zero, it's going to output a Boolean, which is a true or false value. You can think of it as on or off. So we can use that to enable and disable this camera. So I'm going to add another node. I want to search for enabled. I want to set the enabled status. And the camera, it's a component. So come to the component section, grab set enabled. Another way to do that is you can actually click on this node, drag and drop. And this will show you everything that you could uh, connect it to. All right, so I'm going to take this Boolean value, plug it in, I'll plug in my camera. And now, um, this won't run by itself. We need to connect our sequence to it to trigger all of this math. All right, so let's just really quick go over this again. We're gonna take our count, we'll modulo it with our frame delay, which is just how often we should update. If it's equal to zero, we enable the camera, otherwise it will be disabled. All right, so pretty good so far. Um, let's keep going. So next I want to add a print. I want to trigger that next. And for the message, I can grab this get counts and I can either drag this down and have it here. Or if I don't want lots of crisscrossing connections, I can actually copy and paste it and stick it here just to keep things a little cleaner. All right, so I'll enable or disable the camera. I'll print it out. And then the next step is to add one to the count to know that we're moving on to the next frame. So let's get an add. Let's copy this count. So we'll get the count. I'm going to select the add node. I want to add one. And now after I've added one, I need to set my variable again. So we'll set count to its new value plus one. And we'll trigger that. And then after the sequence runs, it'll be done until our frame is updated once again. Now, now our reduced frame rate, the actual Snapchat frame. All right, so we've added all of this. Let's add it to our scene to make sure everything is working. So I'm gonna bring my preview back over, make it large again so that we can see our effects start working. So let's select the main camera. Don't select your freeze camera because if your script is on here and you disable it, you also disable the script. So select something that won't ever be disabled Add component, select script, select the freeze frame script. Now for the freeze camera, select that freeze cam. And let's refresh everything. And now you can see we have a reduced frame rate going on over here. So here is that slider from our um, frame delay input. So I wanted it to be a slider. You can go from two to 30 in increments of one. So if my delay is 30, you can see we update once per second. If I take this down, it's every other frame. So it's a lot less jittery. And then we can go somewhere in between. Um, maybe something like three or four. You can tell it's jittery, but it's not too bad. And that is our effect. Now, just as a finishing touch, if you have your grain, you can mess with the frames per second of this. 
to try to match your uh, reduced frame rate. So to get your frame rate, you just take 30 divided by the frame delay, and that'll be about, uh, that'll give you the value you should put here. Uh, so if we set our frame delay to three, that's 10 frames per second. I can select my grain, let's change that to 10, and then it lines up a little better. Uh, you don't need them to exactly match, but um, it's a little extra touch you could add if you want. And that is all we have to do to create this reduced frame rate. And what's really nice is since this all happens on a separate camera, it does not affect our original effect at all. Because we set it on this camera, it goes into a new render target. And then that render target, it comes into the camera and it kind of forms the basis for our um, the rest of our filter.